All right guys, we're working on the houseboat today. I'm trying to figure out how to fiberglass this middle piece in. That way it becomes one boat again instead of, you know, three separate pieces. In case you guys forgot, instead of restoring the houseboat like normal people would, we chopped it in half and stuck this piece of another houseboat in the middle. And we wanted to make it longer so that our friends could hang out. So I've read so many articles on bonding fiberglass together. We could probably talk for a couple hours about all the stuff I've found. I've read NASA articles, Boeing articles. I even purchased a couple university articles from some PhDs. So we've got to bond these two pieces of all together and there's many different joints that you could use here you could use just a a butt joint, overlap joints, you know, there's double overlap joints, step joints, but the strongest for something like this is a scarf joint. And that basically means that you've got a bevel back and angle on each side and you fiberglass over that. So the main thing that determines how strong a scarf joint is, is the scarf ratio. So that's the ratio of how thick the material is to how far back you scarf it. So if the hull, let's do some measurements here real quick. I've got the calipers out. Most of it, I think we're in the half inch area. Yeah, there's 0.46 right there. I think the absolute thickest is probably the keel here. I think that's right about an inch. Yeah, 0.968, rounded up to an inch. I think the sides of the hull are the thinnest. So let's see, I think we're, yeah. 0.3 roughly for the sides, so a little over a quarter of an inch. All the marine industry articles seem to want a 12 to one minimum ratio. So that means if your hull is one inch thick, and if you're gonna do a bevel on the top and the bottom side, you divide that in half, so that's half an inch. A 12 to one ratio means you would bevel back six inches. All the different NASA, the aerospace articles, they seem to go with a 20 to one minimum ratio. So if we did it like that, the one inch hull, you'd need to bevel back 10 inches on the top and 10 inches on the bottom. And that'd give you that 20 to one ratio. So what I figured we could do, instead of just scarfing back 10 inches, we could do a foot on each side. So that's two feet. And if we do it like that, the ratio ends up 24 to one for the one inch sections of the hull. And most of the rest of the hull would be 48 to one ratio. The sides where it's really thin, that'd be 80 to one scarf ratio. So that's great. So that sounds like a good plan, right? I need to scarf back a foot on each side of the hull. So what's the problem? What am I complaining about? Let me show you. So as far as distances go, it's 10 feet across the bottom of the hull, it's seven feet up, it's another 10 feet across, and then another seven feet down. So that's 34 feet that I've got to sand and bevel back one foot, 34 feet. And then I've got to do it on the other side too. So that's another 34 feet. But remember the strongest scarf joint is a double scarf joint. So we've got to do it on the outside. So that's another 34 feet here around the boat and another 34 feet here around the boat. But wait, there's more, because I've got to do this side as well. So that is 34 feet times eight, that's 272 feet that I've got to scarf back. So that's 90 yards, so basically a football field. I've got to scarf a football field of fiberglass out of this boat. And that is why cutting this houseboat in half was the dumbest idea we've ever had. So I've grinded out a couple test sections of the hull and I've used a few different things. So big angle grinder with 24 grit sanding discs on them. The grit on these is really abrasive and it does remove a decent amount of material. And then tried stuff like this, concrete grinding cup wheels. These work okay too. Problem is it still doesn't remove enough material. So a one foot section like this, trying to bevel it back, takes almost an hour to grind this much fiberglass out. So if this section takes about an hour to grind a bevel into, and I've got 273 feet to do, that means if I quit my job tomorrow and I spent 40 hours a week grinding this fiberglass out, it would take seven weeks of grinding. So I've got to find a better way to remove this amount of material. There's no way. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is the double scarf joint, you know, in red here is the material we want to remove. And this should be, you know, a straight line, right? It's consistent all the way across. What mine end up looking like, not this bad, but you know, something like this. It's not consistent. 
you know, it's wavy. Why does it matter if it's not consistent all the way across? One of the articles on testing of scarf joints says, if this is perfectly straight, then the shear forces on this, you know, they're even across the whole thing. And if you grind this scarf, and even if you have a little bit of a curve in here, that reduces the breaking strength of that joint by 14%. So I was trying to think of ways to grind these scarf joints flat and then how to remove more material so it doesn't take forever. And I thought of our old cheapo CNC router, and I thought, man, that would be cool if you could bolt this thing to the boat and let it run and grind that thing perfectly even. But that's not really possible. So I thought maybe we could build a human CNC. We'll call it an HN. NC. All right, so here's what I've bought. I stole this idea straight from the woodworkers. So they'll build these router sleds that let them flatten big pieces of wood for making tables. This is all stuff you can get off Amazon, but I bought it from a kit, Crafted Elements. I don't know if they're any good or not, but they make this router plate. It's got holes for different brands of routers. It's got a dust extractor port on it. The rest of this you can get right off Amazon. It's standard CNC kind of stuff. So open linear bearings here. There's closed linear bearings. I've got some rod inside supports here, some stoppers, and then standard linear rod, and then linear rod with supports on it. Now our cheapo CNC router uses these little trim routers, but this is not gonna be strong enough for what we wanna do. I bought a two inch slab flattening bit, and it's got carbide inserts on it. You can replace these. So this will be good. If this works, it'll burn through two inches of fiberglass at a time, but we're gonna need more than this trim router to do that, so I had to break down and finally buy a big boy router. I got this three and a quarter horsepower deal here, and it's a plunge router, so you can move it up and down, set the height you want, maybe. What the f There we go, no. One moment. Uh. Oh, it was locked, <laughs> my bad. I'm not a woodworker, as you can tell. Okay, it's a plunge router, so you can set the depth, so that'll be good. We can get this thing dialed in. All right, anyway, I'm gonna put this thing together, and we'll take it out to the boat, see if this thing's actually gonna work. So I assembled this thing wrong and I have got, look at that. I've got a sine wave in my forehead from the, the GoPro, <laughs> from the, my head strap. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I put this thing together wrong. So these rods don't line up with the brackets. Of course, I put these on facing the wrong way. So I've got to disassemble this, get these linear bearings turned. All right. Oh yeah. What do you guys think? Is this gonna work? Is this going to work at all? Check it out guys, what do you think? Seems to roll pretty good. These linear bearings are better than I thought. I've gotta find a way to support the ends here. So normally the woodworkers will bolt this down to a table. That's why it's got all the screw holes in here ready to go. I'm thinking maybe just some angle, maybe scrap angle aluminum. Hi 
guys, I've got this thing thrown together as best I can here in the shop. I've got the end supports on, that worked out pretty good. And then I put the 3 8 inch bolts in this end so we can adjust the scarf angle up and down. You can kind of dial it in with the bolt and it rolls pretty good around the table. So it's pretty easy to move. I've got the extension collet and the two inch bit in there ready to go. Place your bets now. Is it gonna work or did I just waste a couple hundred dollars on all this? Let's go find out. I've got this thing in here. I think I found a good section of the hull to test it out on. It's about a half inch thick section of the hull. And I've got to get this boat sealed up because it's been raining and I've got plants taking root in the bottom of the boat here. So that's pretty bad. I found some shallow, uh, really thick sea channel and I've got it kind of making a, a clamp on this thing. And it seems to work pretty good. I cannot move this thing at all now. I think this clamping method, that would let me clamp it to the walls, especially the ceiling, which is gonna be the hardest. All right, this is what all this work's come down to. I'm gonna kick this thing on. Let's try to grind our first scarf. I hope it works. <laughs> That worked better than I thought, actually. I had the router set on the lowest speed setting it's got, and it just plows through the fiberglass like it's nothing. Now you can see some of the air bubbles that are in the original hull here, so that's kind of interesting. But it might be hard to see from the side here, but it's it's got a pretty good bubble. Uh, let's get the old calipers here and see. Because the original hull that we started with, it was oh, about half an inch or so here. So I should be, yeah, 0.236. So that's perfect. I hit that right at the halfway point. The router's sucking all kinds of fiberglass dust down into it. You know, normally these are used for wood. So I'll be curious to see how the brushes and the motor hold up in this thing once we get through the whole boat. And the bolts in the back ended up working pretty good because at first, I wasn't quite deep enough to get all the way back here, so I just let some out of these bolts until we got kind of close to that one foot mark. So I just checked the timestamp on the camera and it was under 10 minutes to do that section, so that's way better than the hour that it was taking me to do a test piece with a sander. So we might have a chance of getting this houseboat done before me and the gang are all in a nursing home, so that'd be good. So I got one foot down, 271 to go. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you all next time.